Everybody, Boxbell coming back at you guys again today. I'm going to do some more boa talk here. Um, this is a Motley Jungle. 100% hit for VPI. Um, T positive albino, which is very cool. Um, he's absolutely gorgeous. He's a good boy. I would bring up my female, but she is deep. Just started to go. Her eyes are completely blue. Deep in shed, and she is... Um, 100% hit for VPI T positive slash and then she also has the pink panther gene. Now the VPI T positive or VPI tyrosin, 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 I always have trouble pronouncing stuff, um, was first done by Dave and Tracy Barker. And that's who brought it in. Um, and you can you can go and look up VPI T positive boas and you can see a visual. Um, they're some of the best looking boas, I think, albino-wise out there. Um, they're recessive. Now, the thing is with the pink panther gene, you hear a lot of people talk about the pink panther gene and VPIs, right? You'll hear some people say, mine is a pink panther VPI, or mine is a pink panther hit VPI, or mine, like I have a pink panther hit VPI, right? Which is pastel. The, the thing is with that, and it's still debated, some people think it's polygenic, some people think it's codominant on the pink panther part. I tend to think the pink panther gene is a, is, is, um, a polygenic trait. Um, the pink panther gene, if I remember, I wrote some notes down. Let me see here. Yeah, yeah. Um, the pink panther gene was first recognized in... The T positives right away. They notice the hits and stuff like that, and and so therefore it, it kind of the pink panther and the VPI gene go hand in hand. But it's but it, in my opinion it's polygenic, which, which is why some pink panther VPIs look absolutely incredible, and other people think they have a VPI pink panther because that's what it's sold to them as. But as you get further generations away, and you don't keep adding you know that pink panther bloodline back into it. Or that pastel type pink panther back into it, I see a lot of snakes that are being sold as VPI pink panthers that aren't VPI pink panthers. I see a lot of hit VPIs that are sold as pink panther hit VPIs that aren't pink panthers. Um, so you know, do your research on it. There's definitely some debate out there on that. Um, it's definitely interesting. And Dave and Tracy Barker have brought a lot to us in in the snake world in general. Um, they're absolutely amazing. So that's a little, you know, I'm not going to go into huge depth about the VPI gene because I want you to do your own research too. You know, because I might misquote something or I might misread something or I might misremember something. So when I do these genetic talks, I try to keep it generalized so that way it makes you want to go out and do your research. I give you a little bit of information, but at the same time, I want you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. And also by doing breeding tests and stuff like that. Um, they're, they're absolutely amazing. To where like if you take a uh, call strain albino or sharp strain albino. Um, one is T negative. And then one you know that's T negative which is the lack of you know the, the melamine. And so therefore you got that. But there was some DNA test done clear back in the day. And the sharp strain was showed to be a T positive. But not like a T positive, like you're thinking, like when I'm talking about VPI. So I don't. That's why I don't want to get people confused, because it, it can be very confusing. The sharks are not T positive, but the when they did the the testing on them and stuff like that, you know, that's why they have all sharp strain albinos have so much color, um, because they're not lacking in total melamine, like a true like the call strain. Okay, now I'm gonna bring out a sharp strain. So I'm gonna get out of the camera. And this is, if you guys know, Nirvana, she's been breeding. I have witnessed a few lockups. They're, they weren't locked up when I went down there. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Then I will go and 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 get her. Um, let me see. I wrote it down. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Brian Sharp, just as the first guy that did, that did the Sharp strain, she is really squeezing me. Um, he, uh, back in 1991... Is when I, I want to say he first important. The cool thing is, this is an old book. You know, it was uh, 
th this book right here is an old book, great book. I've had it forever. I think I've had this book since I was like, I don't know, 15. Um, but in this book, right here, this top one is the original Sharp Strain Albino. So that's pretty cool that in this book is the original Sharp Strain Albino. Now, as of, um, I think it was like 96, 97, 98 about there, Brian Sharp stopped doing the Sharp Strain Albinos. Now they're everywhere. Everybody can get them. Um, but he stopped working with them. So you got to, so that's cool. Now, all these albinos are not compatible with each other, okay? So, like, if I breed an albino, if I breed the sharp strain to my call strain or to my VPI, I'm going to get, I'm going to get hits. And you're not going to know which one is hit for which one. So they're not compatible. But the cool thing is, there's a thing called a paradigm boa. Now, you can't do get a paradigm with a call or anything like that, but you can get it with a sharp strain albino. And so, uh, I think her name, uh, what was her name? I wrote it down. Where did I put that note at? Oh, I can't, I, I wrote it down at, where's that note at? Anyway, she used to be known as the bow woman. Um, her last name was Moore. And she came out with a thing called a caramel albino, which is another form of V, which is another form of T positive, but it's not the same as the VPI T positive. They're different. Now, if you take a bow woman caramel and you breed it to a sharp strain, you get something called a paradigm boa. And what a paradigm boa is, is basically a visual double hit. They're just, they're very beautiful looking. Um, uh, the first paradigm was produced by basically boas, I want to say in 2004. Let me see, did I write that down? Uh, I did not write that down, but I want to say it was like 2004, basically boas. Mike was the first one to take the boa and caramel, breed to a sharp strain albino, and that's when he, you know, that's when paradigms were, you know, made. And so basically you're getting, you know, they're working on the same allele type thing, but you're getting a, a, um, a double visual hit, which is how you get paradigms, which is really incredible. So, you know, if you want to learn about paradigms, look them up. You know, you can go to basically Bo's website, you can look it up, you can type it in, and you can find out. You know, he's wrote several articles on them. There's a bunch of different articles on there. you got to search for some of them. But I recommend, do your research. You know, I'm telling you about the paradigms and about that. But you got to you gotta do your own research. You know what I mean? I want you to sit there and if you're interested in what a paradigm bow looks like, look it up. I do not work with paradigms. I've, I've had chances to get them. Um, but me personally, I am not a fan of the bow woman caramel. Um, I just, they, they just, to me, fell in comparison to the VPIs. Um, they're, they're, don't get me wrong, bow woman caramels are, are pretty caramel, are pretty T-positive boas, but compared to the VPIs, yeah, they don't, they just don't hold a candle. Um, but that's my opinion. That doesn't make it a fact, you know, because you might find the bow woman caramel better than, you might find that the bow woman caramel to you is better looking than the VPIs. So, you know, definitely look those up and, and check that out. Now, I'm going to put her away because so I'm going to bring out the big girl. One of my big girls. But this is a girl I put in a video a lot. There's just certain bows that I always put in videos a lot. Oh, snap, Chris. Look at that. Now, what? Yep. All right, Chris Graham. You've been posting pictures, and I told you in the comments today that my big girl was due to shed... And so while we've been sitting here, while Priest was setting up, is she starts shedding. So this is awesome. So this is, like you guys have seen, a call strain albino. Now this is a T negative, okay? And there's a shed and there's more shed in here. Um, something I do try to do um, with all my snakes, okay? And, and, and you guys should too if you have snakes that shed. Boom. Two eye caps, Priest. Got them. All right. One right there. Yep. And so, just so you guys know, what I what I look for in all my snake sheds are, see that right there? That's an eye cap, and then right here is the second eye cap. So that's what I look for. I try to always make sure there's an eye cap, because you don't want that to get stuck on there. Um, let's see. I think it was 91. No, no, no. 
What year was that? Anyway, um, no, no, no. I think it was 90 or 80. Ah. You had the call stream, which you guys have heard me talk about. Um, and basically they were, you know, and I'll go back into that because I, I you know, I, I, I've tried to remember things. Um, I want to say there were four albinos and the first one to make, they were brought in in 83, 84. And Peter Call got them, which is why, like I said in the other video, they're known as a call strain. Um, and he ended up getting them to breed because the guy originally couldn't get them to breed. And he ended up getting a, a hit. And, and he ended up getting uh, out of the breedings, he ended up getting one female breed, he got a hit, and then he bred those back, and he ended up getting the visuals, and that's how that got going. But anyway, this is what they would consider a true negative. You know what I mean? Lack of melamine, it can't, you know, there's no blacks, and, you know, it like a VPI will have like uh, khaki colors and stuff like that. Um, to where if you look at the sharp strain, and this is why the, the blood work, you know, when they're doing the testing and stuff like that, which is why I urge you to do your research, you can see why they would consider this to be more of like a, a, a why it tests as a positive. And I'm not talking the same as a BPI positive or a bo woman karma. I'm talking straight genetics here. And this is why I don't want to confuse you because this is not a T positive, but it is a T positive in the sense that, you know, they the way the testing works is, you know, it's it tests positive. But don't go thinking that, oh, it's another form of, T positive because it's not it's that's why I'm saying you got to do your research and I don't want to sit here and break it down for you because honestly if I did that and explain to you it would take me about two hours it's a pain in the butt am I right priest yeah how many times do I try to break it down to you <clears throat> a lot but I mean it gets the point across how are you starting to finally understand because because these people are probably going what's he talking about how is it uh, negative but yet it tests as a positive and it's not a T positive it did that throw you for a loop when I first started showing you the studies on that? Yes, I didn't. I had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah, so that's why I urge you to do your research. Why I've explained to my son, the one thing I do urge my son to do, Priest, when you ask me about a bullmorph, what's the first thing I tell you to do? Um, just like look into its past, you know? Exactly. I tell him to start doing his own research. You know, I'm always here to help people. I'm always here to explain things to you. If you have questions, you know, I try to answer as best I can. But at the same time, I make him do research. I explain it to him, and I and I give him the general kind of what I'm doing here. But at the same time, I also make him do research, because if he doesn't do his research, he'll never learn. You know what I mean? I, and that's the thing. You have to do your research on these things. And I am so happy she started shedding Chris Graham. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I absolutely, this never gets old for me. Seeing a snake shed, I'm just kind of pulling this through as she's trying to move forward. This never gets old. And she is in with the male right now, so we'll see what ends up happening. Um, keeping that one to me, because I don't want, you know, got to have some secrets. Boy, you can see she's a big girl. She's about 16, 17 pounds now. Last time I weighed her, she was uh, 16 pounds, so she's probably about 17 pounds now. So, um, but yeah, she's absolutely a good girl. She's breeding right now, and and just so you guys know, okay, you guys see these sheds, right? And people always say, you know, why we're talking about genetics and why this shedding. This is a good moment. Okay, this snake is not that big. See, it's moist. When they shed, if they're if you keep your sink hydrated and access to fresh water like I do at all times, I change her water every day. Um, I did not spray her cage down at all while she was shedding. My cage holds the right humidity because I really am on that. The stretch. Look at that. I am pulling that and it is stretching. So you can't measure your snake shed and say that's how long your snake is. It just doesn't work. These shred, they're elastic -y. You see what I mean? Look at that. I mean, it pulls apart. And the more I soak it down, look at that. And see how it's, see how that's starting to dry? That's why it's tearing. But up here where it's wet, I can sit here and pull and pull and pull. And it look how hard I have to actually start to make that before it'll start to tear. Because it's that's what happens when it's moist. And as it dries, it becomes easier. Look at that. I have to really pull. I don't have to put a lot of force behind it. So that's why you can't sit there and do that and think that's how long your snake is. Um... 
so yeah, that's just another general topic I wanted to talk about today with some genetics, you know, and just go over some a couple things, and hopefully it got you curious and wanting to do your own research, because that's what it's about. It's about getting you curious and making you want to do your research on these boas and all these boa morphs and on this subject I'm talking about because you, that's the only way that you're really gonna you know get out there and really learn that information you know and don't be afraid to call a breeder and ask them questions you know I, I you know and I get emails and and I get DMs all the time ask me questions and you know I'm always there to help it's not that I, I won't help I just want you to really do your research and really learn and and try to grow so that's that's all I got for you today Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys understood what I was trying to say. Hopefully, like I said, you go and do your own research. And please like, click, share, and subscribe. You know, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. And that way if I do live, you, you can join and you know when I'm doing a live video. And like I said, if you have any questions or comments, just please leave them down below. This is just three of my snakes just saying, you know, thank you guys so much for watching. Priest behind the camera. Good job, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, like I said, you guys have a blessed and positive day because you know I will. This is Boxboa saying peace.